Hello, boys and girls, my name is Hotsasi, and welcome back to another day in Minecraft. We are down here in our pit, where last time we dug out or exploded out a tunnel in this direction. And I thought, or I initially thought, uh, let's make an L shape with that part as the shorter leg of the L. But then why not... I have decided to make it a rectangle and we will use that in order to construct some chunk loading portals down here at the bottom of the world. We are at least one block above bedrock everywhere and like back there over my head you can see some glass blocks. They are there because we have some slime chunks and if we have a 3x3 three three area on the same level slime can spawn and we don't want that. I have figured out that we need one chunk loader for our cobblestone farm. Our bone mill farm also works with just one chunk loader. Everything there is in a 3x3 three three area that can be loaded by a single chunk loader portal. Unfortunately, the smelting array is a bit too long. That one needs two. With all the extra redstone in our storage system, there we actually need three chunk loaders because it's a bit on the bulky side. I have figured out the coordinates on the overworld and have them converted to the nether side. So let's have a look at where we are on the nether side of things. Unfortunately here on the nether side uh, the coordinates are in this huge lava lake between that pillar here and this pillar there and uh, that land uh, over there somewhere. So we will have to find a way to drain all this lava, at least at the spots where we will have our, uh, our portals. And uh, if we are lucky, the lava lake does not go all the way down. So we can have one vertical shaft to go down and dig out uh, down below. But we will see and we will have to scratch our head how we can achieve that. I have prepared some materials that should help us to get there. First step is to bridge out to the location where I think we will place the loading portal for our storage system. And then we drop just some gravel to fill up all the lava and then mine out the middle part to see how far down we get. I reached the bottom and uh, on the inside I reinforced a bit with cobble because from here on we should be able to just go down with a bit uh, of uh, dynamite or TNT uh, and then when we reach uh, the bottom bedrock uh, we hopefully are able to dig out an area large enough for the portals that we need for storage and then branch out for all the others. But hopefully this works. Uh, so let's get out here. And hopefully that did not, yeah. We blasted a bit out here. So let's repair that because that's the, the level where we have to be uh, careful and um, we will continue this approach until we get done. 
I have been lucky down here. Uh, there was only a bit of lava back there, but that was easily dealt with. And you can see some uh, cobblestone markers. So these three, those are the coordinates for the portals for the storage. Then over there, we have the cobblestone generator, the bone meal farm, and these two are for the smelting array. So the next step is figuring out uh, how we do the chunk loading portal, uh, because as you can see, they are a bit close together. And we probably have a bit of leeway uh, moving them uh, a bit because I tried, or I think I tried to get the coordinates in the middle of the, of the chunk, but it does not really matter where in the chunk in the uh, overworld the, the portal is. And I think uh, we need a bit of room around the portal for everything to get in. This is the portal for the chunk loading in the overall. It's pretty simple with a glitched hopper minecart here in the portal frame that will pick up any items coming through the portal and putting it back into this dispenser. And as you can guess from the rail, the items that will come through are minecarts. Uh, and um, then dispensed again, going through again. On the other side, they get broken and therefore they are sent back in item form and we can pick them up. So now the, the tricky part here is the uh, linking of the portal and the way uh, I find it easiest is if you light the portal on both sides um, and only then go through because situation here is that here in the overworld as well as in the netherworld we have uh, basically portals in the same coordinates but just higher up. So hopefully going through here will bring us to the bottom of the world. Yes, it does. And as you can see, I have uh, put a bit of glass in here to get a nice floor. So then if we jump back through here, hopefully we should end up where we came from very nice so now let's put in a minecart that pushes that one over a bit that one is still here and now we have to go through again Place netherrack here on both sides and light it up. And that breaks the minecart and sends it back through. So let's go back in there. Up out and Where is our minecart? Does not really matter. I have a few here. So if we place that, you can see every once in a while a new minecart is sent through. And through that mechanic, um, the overworld side as well as the nether side is loaded every time something comes through a portal. Uh, the frequency could probably be uh, a bit lower because I think but 
don't uh, hold me on that one uh, once an item comes through a portal um, the world is loaded for 15 seconds and you can see um, this is maybe one or two seconds interval and we can turn the whole thing off by flicking this lever and then turn it on again by this and i think this is the standard setup that we will have for the storage system as well as for the smelting system um, and we will have those running and then the ones for the cobblestone generator and the bone mill farm they will be a bit different but we will come to that in a minute on another side the portals are really close together while on the overworld we really need the space that we have dug out here and the last two portals are not even in that space we need to blast our way through them and what's more we also want to have access from the top from the farm so we can turn the portals on and off the last two portals are virtually the same just instead of having a lever here for turning on and off the chunk loader we have a redstone line that goes up here on the side and basically finish here flush with the top of uh, the portal and then we have a pillow of redstone slime and uh, on top of that redstone we have a sticky piston and that's an easy way how we can transfer a signal from the top down um, i prefer this method because uh, basically it pushes the redstone block into a position and we have a constant signal as an output many other ways of transferring signals up and down just relay on uh, observer signal so we just get out a pulse and uh, we can we could do that but we would have to uh, uh, convert the pulse then back into a constant signal so as you can see currently the farms are not running and uh, therefore the redstone line here is turned off at the top it's a pretty simple uh, way of connecting the line that turns on the farm uh, to this line that gets the signal down to the bottom and that's it for today hope you enjoyed it and uh, we will see what we can do next time uh, probably something uh, less focused on uh, redstone uh, as we have quite a few other projects to tackle as well so i will see you then for now it's goodbye <laughs>